In the last lecture, you learned how to collect form data and insert the data into the database using SQL insert statement. In this lecture, I'm going to teach you how to validate form data before adding it into the database. Before we do that, I'll quickly review uh, the code that we wrote last time. So at the very top of our sign up page, we have included our database connection script. Next, we are processing the form. We're checking to see if in the post array, there is a key email. So if the key email exists, we are going to collect the form data and store them into variables. Next, we're hashing our passwords to ensure that it's secured. Then after that, we'll try our SQL statement. We're creating the SQL statement here. Then we're using PDO to sanitize the SQL statement. Then finally, we insert the statement into the database using PDO execute function. If there was one row inserted into the database, we create a variable called result. Then we just pass in a string to the variable registration successful. If there was any error message, we also create a variable result and simply store the error message in the variable. Then if we come down to the form, we're just checking to see if the result is set, then we echo the value of result. So now if we go over to the form again and just click on submit, you see it says registration successful even without us uh, keying in any information. If we go over to the database and uh, browse, you see that one record was actually added. So to prevent the occurrence of this, we actually need to validate the input from the form before allowing the form to process. If you have noticed, you will see at the very top of our page, we have the string connected to the register database. Obviously, we don't want to display this here. So we'll go over to the database connection script. and just comment at this line. Save and refresh. All right, so that is gone. We can now begin to write our script to validate the form before adding the information to the database. Okay, so we'll go to the sign up page. So in our sign up form, I've included the name control here and I've given the value of sign up BTN. So let me show you the validation that I've written here. So basically I'm checking to see if the button is clicked. If the button is clicked, what we want to do, we want to create an array to store all our error messages. So I've named this array form errors. Next, I'm going to define a list of elements from the form which are required. So here I've stored that to a variable called required feed and I specify each of the items that we want the user to supply. So here we want the email feed, we want the username and we want the password. Next, using the for each loop, we are going to loop through this required feed arrays to check if each of the elements in this array actually satisfy a condition that we'll be checking here. For each loop iteration, the value of the current array element is assigned to the name of feed variable. So in this case, our array is the required feed array, which we have created here, and the elements are email, username, and password. So for the first iteration of this loop, email will be assigned to this variable, and we are going to check is email set or the value of email is equal to none. If that is true, we're going to assign the name email to this form error arrays. So basically we are just going to put this value here and store it in this array. Next, we'll be checking for the username. We will check if the username is not set or if the value entered by the user is equal to none, then we just store this username to this array. Is the password set? Or is the password empty? If this is true, we also add it to the form errors array. So that is all we actually doing here. We loop through each of the elements in this array and just assess the uh, current value, then check for our error and assign the value to the form errors array. The next thing that I'm doing here is actually checking if the form error array is empty. If it is empty, that means there was no error returned. So we can actually go ahead to 
insert the data into the database. So here we collect the information and store them in variables. Here we're ashing the password. Then uh, actually we insert the record into the database using the statement which we have uh, seen before. So next we go to the S part of the statement. If there were error in the form arrays, I'm actually doing a check again here. Here I'm counting if the number of errors is equal to one, I want to do this operation. Otherwise, I want to do this operation. So let's walk through this step by step. Let's say there was one error in the form array. We're going to say there was one error in the form. Then we're going to concatenate that with the actual error that was returned in the form. So we're going to display the error in HTML list element. But if there were more than one error returned in the form array, then we are going to actually say they were display the actual number of errors, then uh, errors in the form. We basically do the same thing here, concatenate this other part uh, with the result string. So let me quickly show you this in the browser so we see how it works. So this is our registration form. Once again, we click on the sign up form and now we see there were three errors in the form. And here it's just display email, username and password. So if we go over to our code again, so this is actually where those information is captured. Remember the elements, right? In this required feed, email, username, password, because all these are required. That's why we get password, username and email here. A much better way we actually be to concatenate the string here to say it's a required feed. Okay, so by the time we go back now and you see email is a required feed, username is a required feed, password is a required feed. So basically we have done first part of the validation. Another problem that we arise here is what if the user actually enters a value here so we say ter and then the user also enters a value here y and enters a value here so now if we click on submit button this is actually going to be inserted into the database but here we are requiring an email address here the username shouldn't be one character so we also need to check and ensure that the correct information is being uh, supplied. So I go ahead and click on sign up. You see registration successful. We get over to the database, browse, and we see that information here. So our next lesson, we're going to be actually seeing how to refactor this code. As a matter of fact, I actually like to wrap all this in a function uh, so that it makes everything looks uh, much cleaner. So in the next lecture, I'm actually going to show you how we can uh, uh, wrap all this in a function, check for the image, then also check for uh, required length for a particular feed.